Hello, comrades. <laughs> I don't know why that felt um, that felt appropriate to say that was so weird. But um, hello, you guys, and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, welcome. I am so glad to have you. My name is Kat, and I am a flight attendant with a major U.S. airline. I know I sound horrific, awful. I have COVID. We'll get to that point of the story later on. Now, if y'all don't have any idea of like what's going on, I need you to pause and go watch part one because I did not actually mean to split this into a part one and part two. It was never intended to be like that, but I did kind of hit y'all with like a, a weird um, side swipe at the end of part one that kind of told y'all why this video is gonna take a hard turn. It has great information as far as like in-flight secrets and stuff that nobody talks about. But on top of that, it's gonna, it's gonna introduce you into this video so it makes sense. But this video is gonna be part two, so I'm gonna be finishing up my three-day London trip and then at the very end, I'm gonna catch up with you guys and explain what happened as soon as the trip ended and what's really been going on for like the last like handful of days because you guys, like I, I truly like, I just, I don't even know. Like mentally I'm, I'm in the toilet, but I've always been one of those people like, I, I will laugh through anything. I will laugh through moments that are awkward, that are uncomfortable, that are sad. It's kind of like a coping mechanism for me. I don't know if any of you guys can relate to that. It's like one of those, like if you don't laugh, you'll cry type of thing. So like mentally, I don't even know where, where I'm at. And I've kind of not let myself like even process a lot of a lot of the craziness going on. Hi, Todd. Hello, Cody. Oh, say hello. Say hello. He's like, to who? Say hello, Todd. Me, 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 me. I'm Todd. <laughs> Here, I'll just, I'll set you in my lap. Todd is a love bug. He must be right next to you at all times or next to somebody. He like, he's like glued to you. Like he's like a Velcro dog. But um, anyways, now before you guys jump into part two, I have a huge brand shout out. And you guys, this isn't just gonna be like a normal brand shout out where I'm like, this brand is great. This one is gonna be a brand shout out where I'm like, ride or die, ride or die because this brand has come through so much. And that is Beam. If you guys have never heard of Beam, like, Y'all. Now, I don't think the brand is gonna appreciate that I'm saying this, but I'm gonna say it anyways. They were like, hey, we're gonna send Kat some stuff to try out and see how she likes it. And I personally thought it was gonna be a hot load of garbage. I truly did. I was like, they can send it, that's fine. But I had no intention, none. I was like, this stuff is gonna be like, you know, I'm like, boop, right in the trash. But, um, sorry, Don. <laughs> oh no. Um, this is, this is, oh, he's like, I'm out of here. He's like, I'm out. It's, it's, uh, what is it called? Like work, he's gonna go request work, workers comp now. Um, but anyways, yeah, they, they said this stuff and I was like, this is not gonna work. There's no way this stuff is gonna work. And I also wanna thank Beam for sponsoring today's video it, because, this stuff, this is probably the only reason I have still maintained a great night's sleep. Honestly, a perfect night's sleep every night, despite everything else going on, despite having COVID and everything else, this stuff, you guys. But if you've never heard of Beam before. Beam is on a mission to revolutionize your health through better sleep and all day wellness. And one of my favorite products from them is the Dream Powder. It is basically a cup of healthy hot cocoa that's formulated to help you get your best night's sleep. And it comes in a variety of different flavors as well as ingredient variations. You can choose to get your version with CBD or without CBD. I personally get mine without CBD. And the Dream Powder doesn't only help you fall asleep, but it also helps you stay asleep, which is something that I have completely struggled with. 93%, a whopping 93% of participants said that Dream helps them get a better night's rest. And I wasn't even part of the study, but this has gotten me through many a nights lately. And honestly, even before, like Chip and I have just made it part of our nightly routine. It's kind of cute that we just like go get our little mugs and make this um, before bed. And after getting proper sleep, I've noticed increased focus as well as boosted energy. And right now with the holidays right around the corner, Beam is having their biggest sale of the year with up to 50% off. So right now, if you click shopbeam.com slash Nesbit or scan the QR code, you can shop Beam's biggest sale of the year with up to 50% off, and that is 50% off. And this is a limited time offer, so you do not want to miss out. Once again, thank you to Beam for sponsoring today's video. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys finish the trip, and then we will circle back and I'll tell you everything that's been going on in like the preceding days. 
So Matt and I ended up meeting up with a bunch more crew members. Some were based in Dallas, some from Chicago, and some from New York. And they ended up taking us over to Mercado Market, which you guys might remember from my last video. We went to one that used to be a church and they changed into a market. Well, this one I believe to be their first location and it's located inside Elephant and Castle and it's so cute. Half of it is outside and half of it's inside and there's so many different food vendors to choose from. So we all decided to have a cocktail and just got to chit chatting as typical flight attendants do. And then my stomach was growling, so I went over to Bip and Bop and got some Korean fried chicken. And this place did not disappoint. It was already hard enough trying to figure out what I wanted on the menu. And then I just went with the Korean fried chicken meal, and it was so crunchy, and the flavor was so good. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Good morning, you guys. Why does my voice sound like this? Waking up with like a giant mirror in front of you, equally humbling. Oh, it's so rough. I guess we should get up and go see. What does it look like outside? Oh, I should I should set this up all cute. Here's like the YouTube aesthetic scene. Ready? You have to hope you don't have like a giant wedgie everybody's looking at. I don't know if you guys can tell though, but the sun is slowly starting starting to rise. It's still, it's still pretty dark outside. What a mess. I've actually been up for like the last two hours. I was on the phone with Chip just chit chatting away because like I just woke up randomly and could not go back to sleep. My mind was just like, I hate when that happens when it's just going full speed about like, oh, I have to do this. I need to do this and this and this and this and you can't get it to just like shut up so you can go back to sleep because honestly, my alarm's not even going to go off for another hour. Where did my water bottle go? Oh. I'm so confused. It's a giant water bottle. Where did it go? Wow. Yesterday was so fun because I don't know if you guys saw um, this last video that I did, but in that one, we ended up going to this place and it's like a food market, but it used to be a church. So this one's like similar, but different. It has its like own style, but also like very, very cool. I don't know which one, which one I ended up liking better. They're both really cool in their own little unique way. I did also end up breaking. I broke my thumbnail yesterday. So once I like got back to the room because it's like a huge pet peeve of mine. You, you are all types of crooked. Get yourselves together. <laughs> no, but like it ended up breaking. So I was just like ripping them off and that glue is so good from Glamnetic. So uh, it took me a minute and like some of them are still, can y'all see this? Are still on, I just could not get them off. That set really was not it. It was like falling apart, all the diamonds were falling off so easily and then like the nail broke. Like I don't usually go through a set that fast because I think I only put it on like three days ago. But anyways, um, today is gonna be the day that we are working the daytime flight and it's also, there is a pilot in the window and we are making eye contact. <laughs> I just wait. <laughs> Oh no! He like came and opened his window right there. I was just standing in there and I just like waved. So I tried to kind of like pack everything up for the most part. So that way like we're in no rush later on. So I guess let's go ahead to breakfast and then I'm also gonna take my little insulated shopping bag as well. So that way we can go run over to Marks and Spencer at some point. Y'all, I made a critical mistake. It was crucial and I'm paying for it and I'm very upset about it. So we went to breakfast. I completely forgot to film. So I'm gonna see if there's like other footage. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I already have like other footage. So if my breakfast looks like a repeat video, mind your business. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, we did breakfast and then we went to the park and I had told Matt, I was like, cause he um, came along with me and I told Matt, I was like, I want to stop at Marks and Spencer 
on the way back. And as we were walking, um, we were walking past Whole Foods and I was like, oh, Whole Foods has a lot of like good pre-made stuff too. So maybe I could go in there. And then I see the big sign that says like they're closed until noon. And then I was like, Oh no. Oh no, y'all. It's Sunday today. It is Sunday, which means everything opens later and it closes early. So all of the grocery stores, Waitrose, Marks and Spencer's, Whole Foods, all of them don't open until noon. So there's that. I, <laughs> I didn't get anything, but there was um, a little gas station open. I like looked in there to see if they had something and I just grabbed a little coffee. Anyways, I did, <laughs> I did close my curtain. So I'm gonna like finish packing up the rest of my stuff, get dressed, and then I guess we will head downstairs to go to the airport. Baby, I'm tired. I am exhausted. I still have work to do because my in-laws are coming in tomorrow. So I'm gonna start editing this video legitimately tonight. But it was such a fun trip. The crew was so much fun. It's nice seeing a lot of like familiar faces and people that you've flown with before. But yeah, it's it's been good. Now it's time to get in my cozy, my cozy jammies, like snuggle up with a nice blanket and get some editing done. Okay, so now that you guys are all caught up on the end of the trip, basically I finished off that trip and then the next day Chip's family was flying in from Germany to come see us. Now his parents have never been to the United States before, so it was going to be the two of them and then they were also traveling with Chip's sister and my brother-in-law and then their kid. So they were all coming over and then we were cleaning the house and like basically right when it was time to like start heading to the airport to go get them, we ended up actually getting a phone call from my brother-in-law and he was like, there has been an emergency, but the signal was so bad. We just could not figure out what was going on. And so obviously Chip immediately starts panicking. We don't know what's happening because also just for a little context, like they don't really speak English. So Chris is basically the only one that speaks English, but even still, like, especially when it comes to medical things, I don't think like that's so common that a lot of people memorize that. So there was a lot of translation issues and stuff. So the flight of today actually ended up calling me and it was um, with my same airline. The entire crew was so amazing. And even my family said like every single person on that crew was so helpful and so nice. And I actually knew one of the speakers on there cause I flew with him before and he, he's like a friend of mine and he's super, super nice. But anyways, um, the flight attendant had called me and said when they were doing their final service an hour before landing, they noticed something with my father-in-law was off and he wasn't responding. He was having really severe hand tremors and he ended up having a stroke. And so they were actually gonna make an emergency landing. Now the emergency landing spot was initially supposed to be Tulsa, which I'm so thankful that they were able to make it all the way to Dallas because I think that would have been even more stressful trying to get out to Tulsa, especially with our dogs and everything else going on. So I'm actually happy that they ended up being able to make it all the way to Dallas. But there were two doctors on board that were helping, but also by the time that they got the physician on call on the phone and then got the clearance, it, they, they could have gone Tulsa or Dallas, like the, the time was the exact same. So they ended up choosing Dallas. And so the emergency people ended up meeting the plane and then they rushed him off. And then obviously there's customs and everything. So they have to get all the documents and everything because you still have to clear customs. So at this point, the flight attendant like gave me a good a good background. I kind of had an idea what was going on. I'm still I'll, I'll forever be in her debt and, and that entire crew. Like it, I just I don't have words. It just really does. I'm, I'll get emotional. Okay. Ooh, it really does just make me really proud to like work a lot. No 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 to just work alongside people like that. You know what I mean? Because it could be your family. It could be somebody else's family. So just just to know like that your coworkers treat your family the way that they, they would treat theirs is really special. But anyways, okay, hold on. I'm gonna compose myself really quick. Anyways, so they ended up um, taking him over to the hospital near the airport. So Chip and I kind of split up and he ended up collecting the rest of their family. And my brother-in-law went with my father-in-law to the ER. So I decided to meet them there because when it comes to English and medical terminology, I'm the one that mostly knows what's going on. Hello, bitty boo. So ultimately he ended up being in the ER for three days. They did tons of tests. 
lots of MRIs, lots of CT scans, um, lots of ultrasounds, neurology testing and stuff, which the neurology unit is where they ended up sending him on either day, day two. I think it was day two they ended up switching him over there. And seizures are actually really difficult to like kind of diagnose and know like what's going on and what's like the root cause of stuff like that. But anyways, he's doing so much better now, so much better. He's actually able to walk again. The hand tremors are gone. Like compared to where he was at to where he is now, it's just like a world of difference. But then of course, that's not enough in itself to worry about, but also, we all slowly started getting COVID as well. So he ended up testing positive for COVID and then um, Chip's mom ended up testing positive for COVID. Sorry, I look a little crazy. I'm like editing the video right now, but I realized I also forgot to mention that another reason that COVID was also becoming really stressful for us is because Chip's mom also has like a lung disease. I'm I'm not exactly sure what it is. I don't, I don't know any of the details of that, but I know she has issues with her lungs. So when we all started getting sick with COVID, that was also a huge concern of ours as well. And then um, Chip ended up testing positive for COVID and then the brother-in-law tested positive and then his sister ended up testing positive and actually shockingly because I'm immunocompromised with my rheumatoid arthritis and the medicines I take make my immune system go down. I thought I was gonna get it the fastest and the worst but actually me and my niece ended up getting it the last so we didn't test positive until today. And then also on top of this, it has been raining so hard here. It's been cold and raining. It's been flooding so much, which is like not typical Dallas weather. And then two days ago, um, <laughs> I told you, if you don't laugh, you'll cry. But two days ago, it was like seven in the morning. And so I think I was the only person that was awake yet. I like came in here to brew coffee. And then all of a sudden, all of the fire alarms in our house started going off all of them and so everybody gets awoken by the fire alarms and then we're trying to turn them off but they just will not turn off they'll last off for three seconds and then they all just keep going off we're just oh we're all just trying to figure out what's going on so we ended up taking three of them out but they're not even just fire alarms which there was no smoke or anything but they're also carbon monoxide detectors so then yeah so then we have to test to make sure that they're not carbon monoxide. So we're also opening up all the doors and all the windows. It's pouring rain. <laughs> but we're trying to air out the house to make sure it's not like carbon, carbon monoxide or anything like that. And so it was like going off for like hours. And the way we put the other three units, they were going off again because they're all interconnected to each other. So I ended up having to call the company. <laughs> I don't have to even call the company. And then we have like two different units installed in the house. So then each one does its own thing. And basically he was saying one of them has to be like faulty and it's setting the entire system of the house off. It turns out it's the one in the guest room that his parents are staying in. I have no idea how, but somehow the device itself has like liquid in it. But when we looked at the battery, the battery is perfectly normal because we thought maybe like it was battery fluid. The battery is perfectly normal. We like looked in the, the ceiling and felt all around completely dry. I know his mom kind of had like the window open and it's been open like most of the time. And like I said, it's been pouring rain every single day, just flooding amounts of rain. So I don't know if maybe some of the moisture got in. I have no idea. I really have no idea, but it was still under warranty. So they're sending a new one. And you would think, you would think, that it all stops there. You would think it all stops there, but not only that, I found out late last night that my stepdad also tested positive for COVID. Now, mind you, we have not been around them. We've, we've been in our own little bubble here. So he must've gotten it from work or from somewhere else. But I talked to you guys in the past that my stepdad actually got diagnosed with stage four leukemia. So for him to get COVID, it's immediately an emergency. So he got rushed to the ER last night and um, all is good right now. They ended up putting him on Paxlovid, which is the same medication they put me on because we're both immunocompromised. Now, I don't know if any of you guys have taken Paxlovid before, but you basically take like three pills of the, of the day and then three at night. And this stuff works. Like usually within like 24 to 48 hours, you start feeling a little bit better, but it leaves like the most foul taste in your mouth. I took it last time I got COVID. I think I was sick for like 14 days. <laughs> 
knock on, knock on wood, I really don't want a repeat of that. I, I actually caught it a lot sooner this time. So I'm, I'm on Paxlovid a lot sooner than I was last time. Like last time I didn't even get on it until I think like day 12 because I kept doing the at home test and they kept coming back negative even though I ended up having it and I stayed quarantined the whole time anyways. But anyways, so um, I'm on that and now he's on that and he's back home. So it has just, it has just, it has, it has just, I just, and this is why I'm saying like, it, it's just, it's been so much all at one time that your brain just, it, it just doesn't, you're, you're just in fight or flight mode that it's like, I, I don't even know at this point. I, I truly don't, don't even know where my head is at. I'm, I'm one foot in front of the other lately. It's just been, it's, it's, it's been, it's been, but um, yeah, this is the worst vacation they've probably ever had. I don't think they'll ever come back to the United States. This was definitely not, <laughs> this was definitely not a, a great impression. This has been legitimately the, the worst vacation in, in the history books. So probably the next video will be like some kind of update video, hopefully, more exciting than, than what's been going on. But anyways, if you guys did enjoy this video, if you wouldn't mind giving it a big old thumbs up and pressing that subscribe button, I would very much appreciate it. It's free for you. And I feel like, <laughs> I feel like I've been through enough. I've earned it. I have earned it. But anyways, you guys, I will see you hopefully next time with much better news. Have a good day. <laughs>